This is Daryl Mark with ApexInvesting.com doing another Be the Sniper or Be the Target trading webinar. It's your choice which one you're going to be. You make it today, you can be the sniper or the target. If you're not making a choice, you are the target. And you have to know why you're not the target in order to be the sniper. So, as with every financial webinar, we have a fun little disclosure. There's risk. Be aware of it, etc. All right, so we're going to talk today about Markers Plus and the new sick trade, actually seven trade technically, trading assistant. And if you want to get access to this, you can go to apexinvesting.com forward slash automate to get access to the indicators, the room, the training, as well as the templates like what we're talking about today. You go to apexinvesting.com forward slash bootcamp and get free 30 days access to the room, the training, the templates, and the indicators course to get access to the automation you do have to buy that because um, we buy it from a third party and sell it to you at a discounted price so a few reminders uh, for everybody the help desk under account help desk is where you can submit tickets but for the training assistant that only is for activations or submitting machine IDs okay so and a reminder activations whether it's the first time or the fourth time can take up to 72 business hours to complete the skype room on the trading assistant page that is where your technical support and your questions are going to get answered okay so if you have a question it's not really the elite room it's not the forum it's not the facebook group it's not the it's go to that skype room because there's people that know the answers in there um you need to watch the training course videos on the trading assistant page as well as the boot camp videos to understand the trades now this happens sometimes have, has, have anybody ever got like a trial expiring error message I mean, either when you first started but after you started up and then it just popped up well if you do a hardware update or if you do a software update like a windows update sometimes windows can change your machine id okay and if it does, it's really simple. Just send us your machine ID and we'll put it in. It's not We're not cutting it off or anything. It's just Windows changed your machine ID on Ninja. All right. Really important. If you have two licenses, we need both of them so we know which one to update. If you just send us a machine ID on one of them, then we're like, well, which one is the one we're supposed to change? So if you have two of them and you ever have to send that in, send in both of your machine IDs. Um, Reminder, if you if you get a, like maybe you bought two licenses, you set up a, you know, got another computer, new computer, you know, whatever, you, not only do you have to activate the machine ID, but you have to download and install Marcus Plus on the new machine. We've had many people try to just send us the machine ID and they're like, it's not working. And they never installed Marcus Plus on the second computer. You have to actually install it on the second computer. Okay. Um, we're going to have a lot of new training tonight based on the trading assistant. So help us, help me help you. All right. When we do a new training, we always tell you about entries, exit settings, indicator names, templates, how to get it, all that fun stuff. 95% of the questions are answered in the next sections that you're going to have. Okay. One of the questions is like, where's my machine ID? Well, we cover that in the training, but it's under about help about Mike um, watch the first video and it'll show you where it is stay focused on what we are covering at that time so whatever I'm talking about at that time that's the questions I want you to be asking me okay ask me the questions that we're covering at that time if you have other questions type them in a notepad put them to the side write down your questions many of you are gonna try to go install it and so again we have not released the install until after the webinar because I don't want you to miss the training, okay? You can't use it properly. Maybe you're watching this after the fact and it's already been released. Watch the training first before you install it. You're not gonna be able to use it properly if you don't know how to use it and why to use it. So please watch this, take notes, stay focused. There's a lot of information tonight. I want you to follow along in each section, keep questions to that section, okay? Does that sound fair to the, like, the best way for y'all to pick up what I'm putting down? Making sure everybody's on the same page. Otherwise, you know, we go back and forth and everything else and we don't get done and y'all get lost. 
Um, a reminder, and of course this just applies to those watching it now, not in the future, but we have a long holiday weekend. Monday is a holiday. The markets will open for a little bit Sunday night. I really don't suggest trading them because uh, the liquidity is going to happen. But it is a perfect time to rewatch, replay, backtest, okay? To, you know, to practice using this on replay. You know, catch up on webinars, training, basic tutorials. Be ready to rock it next week in the Elite Room. But a reminder, the markets will be closed on Monday. They'll open up Monday evening. Um, so we got our specials going for you right now. You can get monthly, you can get gold for silver. You can get four months for half price. You can get $2,000 off of our lifetime packages. So make sure you hop under account and sign up for any plan and you'll see where those discounts are, okay? Everybody should have one of these. Uh, we sent out to everybody who signed up before May 1st. You got one of these marker boards and I want you to really encourage you to keep using them. Have they been helping? Has anybody been using them so far? I got use it daily. Yes, it's helping. Been using it. Been using it. Love it. Very helpful. Every single day. Every day. Use it daily. Good. Be used. Don't just let it be a nice little prop on your desk. Make sure you're using it. Okay? So, Paul, take it off your fridge. <laughs> and put it on your desk. Um... But, you know, there's some good reminders. You're paid to be patient. That's how we make our money as traders. You know, break your rules, lose your house, you know. Uh, I mean, we're in this old crisis right now with the pandemic. And trading really is the one place you can make money right now. Um, you know, market off as you get each three. And then once you get your net three for the day, you're done. Um, and then the main thing is just, you know, are you looking for longs or shorts? Is the market trending? Is there divergence? Is it ranging? Is there an ETX? big thing is their obstruction that's going to be a big part of what we're talking about tonight okay and a thousand times over you're asking yourself these questions you're not just asking them when an x pops up or you know an, a, like a tx or whatever look at the market conditions determine what they are what you're looking for that will tell you the type of trade the condition all you have to do is look for that setup and be ready for it but in this case you don't have to be ready for it your job is to make sure the trading assistant is ready for it Okay? You literally, your job is to make sure the trading assistant is ready for it. If you try to get ready for it when the trade pops up and you have the trading assistant, you're going to be overwhelmed. You're going to be trying to chase that button. Right? Imagine, you know, if I go over here, hold on a second. Imagine trying to figure out which long and short button to hit when an arrow pops up. Do you think that's going to overwhelm you? Like, does that be like, oh, crap, there's no way I can do that? And that is, I want to drive this point home right now. Like, will that be overwhelming to try to figure out which long or short button to hit when something pops up? But you don't have to do that, okay, at all. Should you be asking, is it ranging? Can I do a number four here? Like, right now, could you do a number four? Yeah, we're coming off settlement. That's a deviation level. So could I go in over here and enable my number fours? Do I have to wait on the number four to pop up? Or can I just say, yeah, I could have a long number four right now. I don't need to wait on the number four. I just need to look for the condition. Now, is that something you should be doing whether or not you have the trading assistant? Should you always be looking for the condition for the setup? So we're not asking you to do anything different. If anything, we're helping you focus on just looking for the conditions versus looking for the trades and let the trading assistant take care of the trades. Okay? Does that make a little sense? Because I sort of want to get you into that habit and hopefully this will make you a much better trader because you'll be focusing on the analysis part and then letting the automation part take care of itself. Okay, so you're looking for trending, divergence, range bound, chop, you know, do we trade and chop? No, you know, so your job, like if, if we have a double TX and you see two to three bar chop, would you turn off the double TX or leave it on? So 
So now let's think about that the other way. Let's say there's not two to three bar chop happening. Can you leave on double TXs? Yeah. So does that sound a little bit easier? I can leave it on. It's just if I see two to three bar chop, I need to go turn it off. Is that relaxing? You don't even have to look for a double TX. You're just looking for two to three bar chop. To know when to turn it off. Otherwise, you have it on. Do you like that? So this is the whole benefit of the trade assistant. So again, the new template, we're going to be releasing it after the webinar. And I want you to be focused. And again, you can't even download it. We're waiting until after. Take notes. Okay. So what we want here is we want laser focus versus split focus. Your focus is now not to look for trades. Your focus is now to analyze markets. Let the trading assistant look for the trades. You're just supposed to focus on analyzing so you can ensure the proper setting is on in case a trade comes up. Now, with or without the TA, like I said, you have to analyze market conditions. So this helps you focus on the analysis only versus the analysis and the trades. So that way you can be a step ahead. And the reason I keep pointing that out is because I know some of you are going to feel like this is overwhelming. But in the reality is you're supposed to be focusing on all of this anyway and looking for trades. Except for if you get the TA, you don't have to be looking for the trades at the same time. So, you know, nice Texas saying, you don't have to eat the whole cow in one bite, okay? If you're overwhelmed or new or you don't know some of the plays yet, do you have to put on all six of the different trades? Could you just focus on TXs, like directional TXs? Or ETXs or... Then, you know, you can learn the number fours, you can learn them, but do you have to use them just because they're there? Or maybe you don't like a certain setup. Maybe you found you just don't like third bar swings. Do you have to use it? Okay, so we have more basic templates, but this template has everything most up-to-date on it. So my suggestion would be everybody use this template, but only use the ones you're familiar with. Does that make sense? Don't let it overwhelm you. And if you only can handle one or two of them, just handle one or two of them. And as you learn to look for other things, like you'll learn the number fours are super easy. You just look for two or three bar chop. Then you can add that in. But you don't have to turn it on just because it's there. Okay, so if you're feeling overwhelmed, turn some of them off and just turn on a couple that you feel like you can focus on. Okay? Trading computer, I do want to remind you, this has come up a couple times today alone, make sure your trading computer is up to par. You know, we had somebody trade with a 1,700 benchmark, and you should have at least a 12,000 benchmark. Um, not having a trading computer up to par will cause you to have issues in firing off trades, charts updating, a lot of things. It is a requirement for business. I mean, yes, you can get along with a slower computer, but you are going to be missing out on profits. And, you know, you increase your chances of losses. So I do remind everybody to watch the Trading Computer webinar under Step 8 on the Sniper page. It's, a, it's like a little bit under Step 8. And Peter, congratulations. He just ordered his new computer today. And everybody who's talked to that ordered a new computer has had much better results. So if your computer does not meet the minimum trading expectations, like I said, you can have issues. You need the proper tools. You don't bring a Pinto car to a NASCAR race. Right? Does that make sense? Like, you need a good computer. Just because you bought it a year ago doesn't mean it's a good computer. Just because you got it yesterday doesn't mean it's a good computer. So you want to watch that webinar because I teach you what a good computer is. You know, imagine, you know, you could build a house from the ground up with a screwdriver, but how much longer would it take you? 
I mean, can you imagine? I mean, you could do it. But man, putting all those nails in is going to take a long time. Right? <laughs> and the house may fall down. <laughs> so, but you want to have the right tools for your profession. Every profession has their own tools. You need the right tools. So what we're going to do is we're going to master what matters. We're going to let the market condition. We're looking for market conditions for trade. We're letting the powerful tool do its job. So I do recommend that you use semi-auto. Okay? Because if you use auto, here's the biggest thing with auto. One is if markets go insane, you could have a bunch of orders fired off at once and you don't know what's going on. Okay? Because it'll just fire, 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 fire. Semi-auto, you have to pull the trigger again and again and again like a gun all right so snipers don't shoot automatic they shoot semi-automatic even if their gun can fire automatically they're only gonna shoot one bullet right they're gonna have it set to semi remember you have to rearm it so if you hit long and it fires off an order even if it doesn't fill if it cancels the order you got to hit long again I think everybody should know that by now using markers plus so in this new template, all filters that can, that can, not are, all filters that can be coded are coded in. So you will never need to use the filter button. There will be no filter button check, filter button uncheck. Does everybody understand that? You will not use the filter buttons at all on this new template. Because I know somebody can ask, well, what is the filter button for? When do I use the filter button? No, you don't need to use the filter button. Okay? It's hard-coded in. So I'll show you exactly what that means for each trade. Okay? Because not everything can be coded in. But what can be coded in is coded in. So it's important that you understand not everything is coded in, but what can be coded in is coded in. Okay? I want to remind you, the TA does not miss trades. Market conditions such as low liquidity or speed or slow computer can cause a trade to be jumped. If the trade moves too far before being filled, it will be canceled as entering after that point would be chasing the trade. Does that make sense? It's not, well, TA didn't fill. It's like, no, the market didn't fill your order. The TA placed it. The market didn't fill it. Does that make sense? There's a big difference. You know, when you got like four contracts, one contract, two contracts on NQ, yeah, it can jump your order. All right? So it's important to understand that so you don't think it's the technology messing up, so you understand what market you're trading in. Not going off topic. All right. So we got star, low volume score, ZOI. If you have an off topic question, like I said, Write it down and save it till the end. We got star, low volume score, ZOI setup number four. Okay. Now, we can leave that to off or on. Let's, let's actually review that. Let's review the notes I put up because I want to walk through this with you. Can we leave it off or on? <clears throat> like, should you just leave it on all the time? <clears throat> Do we take number fours off of anywhere, like any time in the middle of nowhere? Or do we only take them off major levels? Right, so remember I said take notes? Okay, this would be a note to take. Leave the number four off unless you're at a major level. Or screenshot this page if you want to. Because you're going to have to set this up when you open up the template later when we release it. Is everybody writing down a note right now? Okay, so we leave it off. But if we're coming off a deviation, a dynamic magnet, a flux from the 6240, a stack or a wall, then we could turn the long and short on. Right? 
So now, what are you going to be doing? Are you going to be looking for number fours, or are you going to be looking for one of those five levels? The levels. You're not worried about if a number four pops up. If it does, great. If you're coming off one of those levels, great. Now, if it goes too far, way past the level, then you would disable it, right? Am I right? Like if it went way up and it never gave you number four, and there's no level there, you disable it. Right, if you're like, exactly, like today, you're on that flux level over and over and over again. You could leave the number four on while you're on that flux level. Okay? So does that sound simple to manage if you think of it that way? And that's this, this is my goal going through these six things with you, is to help them feel simple. So you don't feel overwhelmed. So now you're not like, oh, there's a start with volume. I, I gotta, no, I gotta turn it on. No, it's like, just, are we near level? Turn it on. We're no longer near level? Turn it off. So that would be one of the questions you would be asking yourself. So you want to write down a question. You could write down, are we near a level? And you need, you need to memorize what those five are. You can write them down if you need to. If so, turn it on. So you're always looking for a level. That's one of the questions you'll ask yourself all day long. Third bar swing. This can be turned on most of the time. Meaning you can leave it on long and short. So if there's a stack in the way, if the mark's at the bottom or the top of a range, you know, then turn it off. Most things you're going to turn them off if there's a stack in the way or the mark is at the bottom or top of a range, right? Now, one of the cool things that we built into the third bar sling is one of the rules is to not take a third bar sling right out of quill chop. Like if you have up, down, up, and the third bar is a third bar sling, you're not supposed to take that trade. Well, now... The TA automatically on the third bar slings won't take that trade. If it's up, down, up, and then up, up, it won't take that third bar sling because that's, that's a trade you should not take. So you don't have to worry about looking for that coil chop. All you need to do is if there's a stack in the way, there's you know something at the bottom, or if you're at the bottom top of range, just turn it off. And you should always be looking for stacks. You should always be looking if you're at the bottom top of a range. Right? So you might want to turn you might want to write that down. If I'm at there's a stack in the way or I'm at the bottom of the top of a range, I need to turn things off. Is that pretty simple for third bar swings? So far do y'all feel like you can breathe? Does everybody feel able to breathe? Not feeling overwhelmed. Elevator. You can pretty much leave it on. Um, there may be times that are best to turn it off. Like when I teach you, like if you're way past a trend, you know, but I mean, you don't want to trade them into a wall, just like most things. You don't want to trade in top and bottom of ranges. You don't want to tra trade into stacks. Well, that's pretty simple across the board. Um, if you have the one big thing is if you have coil chop in a trend, you don't want to take an elevator after there's already been coil chop in a trend. So if you don't know that, go back and watch the video on elevators. So if you got quill chop in a trend, you'd turn off that wall. Like let's say you had a long trend, you had quill chop, and then a little bit late, like as soon as you had quill chop without an elevator, you'd turn off the long until it you know went down again, and then you can turn the long back on for the next time around. So basically, you turn it off when you have quill chop or any of the common things: bottom and top of ranges, stacks, walls. So the one thing to really be looking out for for elevators is if you have quill chop in a new trend, then turn it off. Is that a simple one to keep track of? Now, some people also don't like taking elevators if uh, there's been a huge long trend and it's really went far, then they'll turn them off. It's like, well, we're really up. Yeah, I don't want to take an elevator like this far into it. So then you turn it off. Beyond that, you just leave it on. So to summarize it, you just leave it on unless you got one of the common things, walls, ranges, stacks, a quill chop, or you're way into a trend. 
And that I know is a bit subjective, that last one. So, so y'all feel y'all got the first three? Got number fours? Got third bar slings? Got elevators? All right, this one is really, really important, okay? It does not know if there's gonna be ODD divergence. It does not know if there's gonna be deviation reversal divergence. It does not know if there's gonna be an enhanced trapped Xbox. That is not built into a filter, okay? So you're gonna leave this off all the time, okay? It will fire off if you enable it. So make sure you only enable it when there is a trade setup. <coughs> this is now like using the filter. Exactly. So now if you hear ETX and you want to take the trade, you hit it. It's one of the few trades when you hear something that you'll actually click it. Okay? And that's really only if it's going against the trend, because the one that goes with the trend will take it anyway. So DRD is deviation reversal divergence. Yeah, what I will do is I will take this and make it into a PDF file and I will upload it under the video, which will be on the Trading Assistant page tomorrow, okay? So, if there's not ODD, like I don't have oscillation detector divergence, should I turn this on? If I do turn it on, what's it going to do? If I turn it on and there's not oscillation detector divergence, is it still going to take the trade anyway? Okay. So is it important to make sure there is ODD? So pretty simple, just, oh, we got ODD. Okay, well, cool, I can take a short and turn the short on. You wouldn't really need to turn the long and the short on, would you? You'd only turn on the long or the short. And you don't have to worry about a double TX, a DTX, I'm sorry, not double TX, an ETX if you're going counter trend. Does that make sense? Because the trend one will take care of itself. So only turn this on when you see ODD, DRD, or a DTX going against the trend that you want to take. Most of you don't even take the D, the ETXs against the trend. Yep. This is basically your counter trend trade. Would be a way to summarize it, Benjamin. Exactly. So, so is this easy? Leave it off. Just turn it on if there is divergence or an ETX going against the trend. So when you're setting this up, you're going to set them to semi and you're going to leave long and short disabled. Right? There is no audible alert for counter trend. You're going to have to watch it. It's just going against DR. You're taking a short when it's green or long when it's red. Coming up, Stephen. All right, double TX. Save the question. Double TX. You can leave this enabled, just like we sort of talked about this earlier, all the time, unless there's two or three bar chop. It will not filter out two or three bar chop. Coil chop is okay on, on double TXs. 
but two or three bar chop, <laughs> two to two, two to three bar chop is not okay. So is that pretty simple? All you're looking is for two to three bar chop. Same rules, everything, every market. Like, can y'all handle that? Does that, I mean, does that feel pretty simple? Like, I'm just looking for is there chop. So you're going to want to make yourself like a little short cheat sheet of what you're looking for. But hopefully you're feeling like this is simple. That's what I'm wanting it to be. Because this is all stuff you're supposed to be doing anyway. We're just making it where you don't have to look for the trades. I would not use the old template at all. I would only use this one if I were you, Leonard. There's no reason to use the old template at all. Especially since number fours and DTX has had different rules. They'll still be there, but I wouldn't use them. These have better filters built into them. This is up to date. We'll go into that. TX filtered. These will only take TX reversal trades that are in line with DR, don't have double clusters, and it filler, filters out coil chop. Obviously, it's not going to fill out two to three bar chop, but it filters out coil chop. You can leave this on all the time. So you can have long and short always enabled on this, except when you're going into a stack or a wall where the markets are ick, like there's a lot of random chop and wicks. Or if you're going into the top or bottom of a range. This is the easiest one. Right, you just leave it on and if there's stacks, turn it off. Along with most other things. Is that easy? You may feel overwhelmed or y'all feeling like this is digestible and doable. Too easy, like it, doable, getting spoiled. Would it be smart to go and do some market replay and practice this? Just to really get your questions down, especially with this three-day weekend. Yeah, you can use it in sim. Uh -huh. So, do y'all see what I mean by this makes you focus on your analysis, your conditions? So I think it'll take a little bit of practice, but it is pretty simple if you'll keep it down to these basic things. I mean, what I've done is I've just taken the entire sniper training and put it into a few slides and automation for you. I mean, do y'all get that? Like we've taken like everything you've learned and we've just compacted it down to watch for a few things and let the TA take care of everything else. Big shout out to Dennis for helping develop this template, doing 99% of the legwork on it. Gabe helping out, Cameron, Marion, Lori, John. Now, some things I want to make you aware of. Is it possible to have multiple entries at once? Like if you had a number four and a TX or a TX and a double TX, could you get two entries at the same time? Yes, yes, absolutely. I got them today. Okay, so hopefully that works out for the better, okay? Um, you have a couple choices. You can go in and you can try to turn it off if there's two of them. Or you can close it out or you can just let it play out. There's really no other way to avoid it besides you either getting to it and turning it off before it, closing it out, or letting it play out. Okay? So 
James says, this takes a lot of the mental anguish out of it. That is the goal. I just let them play out. <laughs> I can't tell you what to do. Yeah, you're not looking at everything, trying to second guess whether to turn it on or off. You're just literally like, are we in the conditions? If they are, then I'll let it take the trade. It's almost like you're more focused on the left, just looking at that left thing and then typing it out or clicking it. Now, here is another odd situation that can come up. You can get two opposing entries. It doesn't happen a lot. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you an example. And you wouldn't have taken this trade due to it being in the chop that it had, the two to three R chop. But it's a good example of what could happen. If you got a short entry on one thing and you got a long entry on another, like you could get a double TX short and a double TX long, probably not going to get that if you void out the, the um, TX chop, okay? But if it does happen, it will simply flatten your position, okay? It won't get you into another trade. It will just flatten you, all right? So... If another one pops up and you're already in, you can either let it just flatten you out, you could turn off the opposing entry and let the first one ride itself out, or you could flatten your position before the opposing entry happens to let the other one run. No hotkeys. The hotkeys are in the top left, long and short. Okay, but if it gets an opposing entry, it's just going to make you flat. It's not going to take you the other direction. It's just going to make you flat. Okay? Okay. So here's an example of going in and getting a double TX long. Now we're in two to three bar coil chop. So would we be taking this trade anyway? Just same commission as a round trip. So we shouldn't be taking it anyway, but it's a good example. Okay, so if you got into this one, and then notice there's a TX right there. Well, then we get another TX and it goes short and it went in and it just flattened it out. See, there's nothing left. There's no remaining um, ATM, which could get you into trouble. Okay? Because if you ended up getting flattened and had an ATM there, then you just have naked orders out there. Okay? So I just want you to know what can happen if that happens. Not so much be aware, afraid of it, just be aware what happens? Okay. I'll go over the visuals in a moment, Stephen. Adjustments. Um, remember, if needed, you have to adjust your stops, your take profit, depending on your fill. Your ATM is based on your fill price, not where you want it to be fill price. Okay? So... Just make sure that you always adjust those to be like, you know, an example, 10 ticks above the high on NQ or whatever. Remember, if there's a level right before your take profit, you do want to go ahead and adjust that take profit to be right before that level. So if you got a mini magnet, like right here, then you put a take profit right before the mini magnet. Okay? Remember your focus. Your focus is not the entries. If you make that your focus, you'll be too late. You'll stress out. Let the TEA take care of the entries. Your focus is the market conditions for if a trade should be taken, if it were to appear that is enabled or disabled if it should not be taken. Okay? The new templates, again, will be released tonight. We might release another one tomorrow night or this weekend if we see anything that we need to improve on. I'm going to go through the new template with you. All right? So we're going to go through and actually set it up. Reminders, you got to select your account on every one you want to use. People are like, it's not, it's saying loading. Why is it saying loading? Because you haven't selected an account. So select the account you want. Choose semi on each one. Choose ATM. Your ATM on it, on each one. Turn to off on each one, and this is important. When you're going to close your workspace, turn it to off on each one and save the workspace and then close the workspace before you shut down. You don't want to be booting up Ninja with trades going off in the background and you can't even see what's happening. You must have a blank workspace open to close your sniper workspace. Okay? 
So I see some great questions coming through, but I want y'all to wait till the end so we can stay focused. Okay? But yeah, if you save it and you have everything turned on and then you go ahead to shut down Ninja and you don't clo turn everything off and close your workspace, then it's going to open up and you can have trades firing off in the background. You don't want that. Okay? So, with that, let's look at this. And let's talk about each one. Okay? So first, you're going to load your template up. You're going to right-click, go to templates, or if you're opening a new chart. Template has a really easy name. For ES, it's called ES Sniper Master. Okay? Do y'all remember that? ES Sniper Master. And there's a replay one. The only difference on replay is it doesn't have any news on it. Okay? And there is a, for everything else besides ES, there is a TX Sniper Master. And again, a replay. So you got that. So if you close your workspace, OP will not load during the closed down period. Correct. If you close your workspace, now you can switch workspaces if you still have it open and it will run. But if you close the workspace, no OP will load. The only time I close mine down usually is I'll, I, I'll do it like between five and six. And a lot of times I'll do it before the market opens. Just so I have a fresh computer. And I, I have a top-of-the-line computer, and I still do that. Okay. So, set up fours. We're near settlement, right? So, the first thing we're going to do is, like, now I'll just go in and do sim, sim, sim. And you choose whatever account you want to put it on, but since I'm just playing with you here, I'm going to put it on SEM, okay? I'm going to put everything on SEMI. I'm not really going through questions yet, so save them because I don't want to miss your question. And then I'm going to select my ATM, so I'll go over here. I got this one, I got six contracts built in. Click that. And then I select all my ATMs. Okay? That is the first thing you're going to do. All right. Now, we're around settlement, right? We're actually below it. So I could enable short. Right? For number four. That makes sense? If we got above it, I could disable short. I could actually enable long just in case we got a number four that popped up above it. So we can have both on there until it gets far away. Third bar slings. Yeah, I can take a third bar swing. We haven't had a coil chop or anything like that. So I could leave those on. Right? Everybody follow me so far? There's been no coil. It doesn't really matter if there has been a coil. That's really an elevator rule. But there's no stack in the way. Obviously, I'm not going to get a third. Now, if that third bar swing was going to take me right into this settlement, like if we turned around then I might go, oh, yeah, I don't want to take a third bar swing right into a settlement if it started going the other direction. That makes sense? Right now, I can leave it on. Elevators, we haven't had a coil chop. We're not too far into a trend, so 
Yep, yeah, I'm good. I'll just leave those on. Do we have ODD? 8899 versus 8325. You could technically say that's OD if you wanted to. So I could put long OD on, I wouldn't put short OD on. Right? Now, as that number grows and gets too big, then I would turn it off. Right now, we're getting past 80%, so I'm going to turn off ODD. We're not in two to three of our coil chop, so I can leave that on. And obviously, I can pretty much, we don't have any stacks in our way, so I can leave on the filters. So now all I'm doing is each bar, like this bar is here, there's really nothing for me to do. As each bar progresses, now if I went over and I'm not going to go through and flip them all on and off, but right here, what is the one big difference? What is the one thing I would not turn on on this NQ chart? Double TXs. There you go. So it would not turn on double TXs because we got two to three bar coil chop. Everybody good so far? Okay, so let's back up to like 9 a.m. this morning. Okay, so we're coming up here. We haven't had coil chop. We don't have to worry about taking it long at this moment because it's going up. Um, we could get a bounce off of that settlement. Again, TX filtered is for with the DR no double clusters and no coil chop. Why is the filter button on the new template? Because we can't take it off. It's part of the program. We just don't use it. It's like we don't use the exit button. Okay, so right here, I mean, are we good? We don't have coil chop in our way. Right now, there's no setup I need to be worried about. It's going up. The settlement. Okay, now we got short here. We also don't have OD. Okay. We good on everything? It's 22 versus 63. So go forward. Okay, we're by a flux level, so this flux level we can still leave on our setup fours, right? Right now I'm gonna challenge you to make your own cheat sheet. I'm gonna give you the PowerPoint. That, but who makes the best cheat sheet contest? Still good on everything? No, there's no stacks in our way. We're good, right? Like, I don't see a reason not to take a trade. Still good? changed okay we got coil chop there but it doesn't matter it filters out coil chop for us
right, would you say we're in two to three bar coil chop now? What would we to save if we were in two to three bar coil chop? Yeah, just click the double TX. Okay, are we out of two to three bar coil chop now? So now we re enable it. Okay, did we just have a coil chop? You know what we also had? We had an elevator. Now, one thing I want you to notice on this is this actually marks things. We have a legend up here. What that says elevators and different things like that. It'll put, and sometimes they'll plot on top of each other, which can make them a little hard to read. But it wasn't an official elevator because it didn't have a cluster, right? It was close to an elevator. So you had a short right there, but it was in coil. So it didn't plot a square. It would have plotted a square if it was an elevator. Okay, and then whenever it sees a sniper third bar swing, it'll plot a triangle. It'll plot a dot if it sees a setup four. It'll plot a diamond if it sees a TX. It'll plot triangle up for DTX. And it'll plot an arrow if it sees a filtered TX. If it was in Q, that would be a legitimate trade. Yes. But you'd have to manually take it because it still filters out coil chop. And the only way you wouldn't filter it is you'd go in and say, go ahead and take it. No, you cannot reorder them. Because everything is layered in in a certain way. It's part of the programming. Don't mess with it or you're going to break it. Okay, what is the one trade we turn off after we've had a coil chop? Third bar swings, right? So let's disable our third bar swings. After coil chop, we disable a third bar swing. So that's all you're looking for. Like, oh, we got a coil. Okay, disable third bar swings. Okay, now we're going in a different direction. We can go ahead and turn those suckers back on. Third bar swings will auto filter coil. Yep. That's why it didn't take this one. This would have been a third bar, could have been a third bar, if it would have had a trapped order in it, it would have been a third bar swing and it would have filtered it out. It'll filter immediate coil. I'm sorry, elevators will filter immediate coil. So third bar swings will filter the third one after a coil. And then the elevators are the one that if you have a coil, so like back here, and this is good because y'all are y'all are actually picking this up. I'm really trying to get. So the third bar, like that third bar swing, wouldn't be taken anyway. But what is the one other trade we turn off? I want to make sure everybody's on the same page. The elevators, right? So if there's a coil, that's when you're gonna turn off your elevator. Okay. So coil is really where you're looking for your elevator to turn off. The third bar swing will filter it out for you. Now it's going again. Okay, now we can turn our elevators back on. You should be able to do it intra bar, just depending upon how fast your PC is. But before the bar closes, unless it's already closed. But here's the thing is, sometimes the price closed, but you don't see it closed. Like it takes a second to draw it after it actually happens, a millisecond or whatever. So as long as you hit it before it technically closed, then it will turn it off or on. But I don't have to look for the trades, right? I look for the conditions. 
And that's the big piece, is look for those conditions. Okay? What condition are we in right now? So we turn off double TX's. We're still in that condition, right? So we're gonna leave it off. Are we now out of that condition with four bars? Yes, so now we can turn it back on. Y'all feel like this is pretty simple? Right, if we have, this is when, this is when we actually missed, 85,000 versus 20,000. So can we turn on our OD long? Yeah. All right, so you can turn it on, you can turn it off whenever OD goes away. So it'll take a little memory and a little practice, but are y'all getting the idea? So we got short right there, over here. Okay, well, what about like right here? Yep, we're right. We're, we got so many levels right now. We got dynamic magnets. We got. I've been trying to find a place to turn off the number four, but we're always on a level. So we're good. Yep. Point in trade. Oh, what condition are we in? Yeah, two to three bar coil chop. So we turn off our number fours. Do you have a stack above you right there? So you got a stack above you, so you're probably just gonna go like, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, we, you know, we got the shorts on, we're fine for that. If we had OD, which, yeah, somebody said OD actually a second ago. So yeah, so we should have had our OD on, because we got 95, and then we got OD going on. No stack in our way, so it, it'll take that short for us. Now do we have a long stack in our way? Oh, it just took a trade. There we go. I got double filled just now. <laughs> I don't know if that's valid, but it just gets you going. Uh, so we got short on. We turn that back on. Turn this on, turn this on, turn off all. We turn on our double TXs. Well, no, we're in two to three by cool chop. We can't have double TXs on. ODD, we're past that. We're going over here. We got. Y'all are all like caught up in the PL now, aren't you? Um, I don't even know what it looks like over there. So I don't know if it should be on. <laughs> um, elevator. So, yeah, no coil chop on that. There we go, I made 1,050 bucks, not too shabby. Is that cool? 
We're not even looking at it. <laughs> um, set up fours. No. TBSs. Yes. DTXs. No. Actually, we're, we're close to two different walls, so we could put on our number fours. What happens if you get filled twice, but not on different setups, but the same one, like ETX with a trend is the same, but gets filled at the bottom most and second from bottom? I don't know what you mean, Doozy. Somebody's like, I got 87 bucks and I wasn't looking. Ask me in the room. I think that's a little more complex question. Okay, but do y'all get the idea? We'll see, one person brings up, this will make looking at one market more difficult. Well, sort of, but remember, like, I'm doing this. Okay, I'm going pretty fast. Okay, I mean, some of these bars take minutes and some take seconds, right? So, but what it will make you do, if it's making, if this is harder for you to do this and look at two markets, that means you're not analyzing both markets anyway. Because everything you should be asking yourself to turn this on or off, you should be asking yourself to take trades. So no matter what, you should be asking yourself these questions, no matter what. So it actually won't make it harder it just makes it more realistic. It makes sure you're focusing on the analysis that matters. And once you get it down to where you can scan back and forth, it'll actually make it easier because all you're looking for is market conditions, market conditions, market conditions, market conditions, as each bar pops up and down. You know, if it's just like barely moving, I don't have to worry about it. Let's see, I got a diamond, so I got... That one actually got an ODD DRD, which it shouldn't have got. But it was an ETX, so it's valid. So it got an ETX, and it got a um, filter trend. That was that short trade that we won right there. All right, I'm going to save this, pop it on the Facebook group and YouTube. Um, but first, I want to open up. For questions. Y'all did awesome holding your questions. Okay. So let me go down and look at questions. But that's the main part of the webinar. I know some of y'all got to go. That's cool. But if you have questions, then I want to make sure I, I got them all. Same rules apply day or night. Yes. Same rules apply day or night. Same rules apply whether you're trading NQ or ES or any other market. You can still add your detectors to the bottom if you want to. Yes. So this is sort of nice because it's going to put symbols on there for you. Don't change the colors of the symbols because the code reads the color of the symbol. So if you want colored whatever, then add your detectors to the bottom. And here's what I do. Let me show you all what I do on my detectors, okay? Okay. So I go in, I scroll down here, and I add in the live double cluster, elevator, star, and third bar sling. Okay. Let me see if I can shrink this. There we go. And you can use whatever colors you want. Here's what I do. I make my double cluster, my TXs, white. I make my elevators gold, because they always have a cluster on them. I make my star with a low volume score. I make that Dodger blue. And I make my third bar slings purple. Okay. Hit apply on that. And then once it applies it, then I go back in 
And notice my first one is on panel five. So I make my elevator, panel five, make my start with the DOI, panel five, make my third bar sling, panel five. And now all of them are down here in one thing. And then you go back and just re-shrink these. And now you have all your detectors in one panel, so it's not taking up a whole bunch of space. That's what I did. Let's see here, going down the questions. So that's how you can get your visual alert, Steven, is not only through the legend that plots, but also through the detectors. If you click on the off tab, do we also have to turn off the long and short? I would. Um, can we take trades on multiple accounts using the TA? Uh, the TA does not use group functions currently. I actually just asked Pablo to program that in. So hopefully he'll have that in on a new one. Um, if y'all are wanting a, a number two so you can do this on two accounts, please let me know. Like Skype me about it. And we can make a number two of these. And get that out to you next week. So that way you could, you could run the TA on two different NQ charts at the same time. Or two different ES charts at the same time. Okay. We'll make sure we have the final template and then we'll do that. TA setups, if you want to number each based on their most probability number, what would you rate them? I'd rate them all the same. Probably put double TXs at the top. If you wanted, if you wanted a number one, I'd put double TXs. If you put number six, I'd probably say third bar swings. Everything else would be equal in the middle. Um, scrolling down, going down. Yeah, calling trades will be more about what to turn it on and off. questions I already answered so I'm two weeks into the sniper boot camp and following the course however most of this seems way out of my league which is normal I'm assuming is this information different than the semi-automated program webinar I watched no it's not different we just added more trades that you can take so if you just started you can just start literally with the TX trades. Like this is your number, your setup twos is the, the filtered and the ETXs. So you can leave that one on all the time, except for when you have stacks. And then turn this one on whenever you see an ETX, uh, you know, an ETX. And you can literally just focus on just those two. Currently not automating triple dippers. Let's see, can this be used on any chart? Yes. Is there a way to trade using multiple accounts? Okay, just talked about that. Um, my main thing to remember, which is which when watching market conditions, right? So that's why I said take notes and make yourself a cheat sheet. What you ought to do is we ought to post up all the cheat sheets like in the Facebook group or something and then, you know, figure out which one, like combine them and make the best one as a group. That's how one of the reasons Apex is so great is because of the combined um, minds of everybody. How do we condense the indicators or bottom to make more room for the chart? I think I just showed you that right there. Because this one already has the indicators condensed over here. This is what it looks like when you load it up. So you can grab right between the lines make bigger or smaller let's see here
Please explain the difference between coil chop versus two to three bar chop. Coil chop is when you have up, down, up. Or down, up, down. Okay? Two to three bar chop is when you have a couple bars going up and a couple bars going down. A couple bars going up, like one, two, one, one, two, one. So two or three bars chopping up and down versus just up, down, up. So coil chop is up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up. Two or three bar chop is where you have a couple bars going up and then a couple going down or one going down and a couple going up and then one going down. It will take two trades at once and you are bound to eight contracts with Lulu. Will one order not fill? Okay, one is if you're trading Lulu, you should never be trading eight contracts. If you are, you're not following my instructions and you're probably going to blow your account. I mean, look at this. I got to set on six and I have a $300,000 account. So that's one, is you're trading too many contracts. Two, if that did happen to happen, it will not fill. We will just reject the order. If you're trading too many contracts. So the TX filter only takes a trade with DR that ha doesn't have double clusters on it. Correct. And it's not in coil chop. That is what a trade fil TX filter trade does. You said close chart so you won't open up in the morning to a trade, but you don't want to lose your OP data. I'm saying not open up in the morning. I'm just saying when you open up your charts. So like every day you should close down at least once and reopen. You don't want to close down and reopen. Like in the morning I'll close down and I'll reopen before the market opens. Like an hour before the market opens, I'll close my charts and I'll reopen them. So, but I shut down my workspace. Like I literally go over here and I do file, workspace, I save my workspace. And then I do file, workspace, and I'm gonna do it right now because I don't want to, but I'll close my workspace and then I'll show Ninja. But I wouldn't want to save it with everything on, right? See how that stuff is on right there? So I need to go back and at least turn these long and shorts off, okay? If you wanna be really safe, turn them all to off, but at least the long and shorts need to be off. All right, and then file, workspace, save workspace. Okay? Let's see. Daryl, in your opinion, what are the setups with the best winning rates? Double TX, I'd say, was probably the best winning rate. But double TX and number fours go really far. So, I trade all of them. Can you switch back and forth from ES to NQ with the same TA? No, you switch it between two different charts. So like I have a TA loaded on NQ and I have a TA loaded on ES. Do not switch your symbol. If you feel like it's overwhelming, you're totally missing the point and I'd watch this video again. Because if you feel like it's overwhelming, you're not analyzing. All, this, all this I'm telling you to do is analyze and enable what should be analyzed. The only re, I mean, you have a few more of these. Just don't turn on the addition. Don't turn on the elevator. Don't turn on the third bar sling. Then you have the old one. So you should be able to ask yourself all these questions as you're doing it. That's how you use it properly. So my, my fear is if you're saying it looks overwhelming is that you're probably not doing real well in your trading. You could move these up if you wanted to, but don't don't mess with these indicators right here, guys. You're gonna break it and then you're gonna wonder why it's not working. The seventh trade is a ETX. So you got ODD and you got ETX. No, that's the size that Ninja plots the symbol. 
The only tr- ones that there are... <laughs> people are asking for more TAs. These are the only TAs that we have. Oh my gosh. Um, this can be used on any chart, yes. I don't think we need any more TAs. Yeah, all you'll have to do to get access to this is after the webinar is over, I will ask the programmer to push up the new one and I'll pop a message up on Ninja when it's up. And then you'll double click on your toolkit and then you'll click install. It's not up there yet, but it will be. There's no urgency on the OPR trades at the moment. Let's, let's try to handle what we got in front of us. Yes, you can use multiple ATMs at the same time. Actually, that is a good point is, let's say this is, I know one of the, our traders, like that, let's say they want to do a bigger ATM or whatever, um, or even a different size on different trades. So I could go over here, like here's a you know 21.9 ATM and I can choose different ATMs for different trades. So if you wanted to let setup fours run further, you know, you could do that if you wanted to. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm not suggesting you do that, okay? But the option is there for you to do that. The main reason there's a template for ES is because you have to change the institutional blocks order prints on them. And that's the only market you have to change them for. That's why we have an ES one and all other markets one. Does the ODD DRD help you with the OD number moving once you're in a trade? No. All it does is take a trade if you tell it to. It has no idea if there's ODD or DRD. Well, there's not any news right now. There's no pending news. The news has actually been moved down here to the deviation section. If you want to change it, then you can go in, find the news, and you can change it to, you know, panel one if you wanted to. We moved it down here so it'd be sort of out of your way. You can always like stretch it out if you want to see all the day's news and then bring it back down. But that way you'd have more chart that you're reading. Do you have to pay for these when you already have a TA? If you already have a Markers Plus, all you need is an Apex Elite membership to be able to use all of these. You can only use the TX ones. The um, You can only use the TX filtered and the ODD TX with a free membership. You have to have a paid membership to use the setup fours, the third bar swings, the elevators, and the double TXs. It could even be the $1 trial and that would still count. So you could upgrade the $1 trial if you want to get access to it. Can you take a double TX after coil chop? Yes, just not after two to three bar chop. Color code the text of the setups. There is no text on the setups. We can't change the colors up here. And there's no text down here. Does the new template have all the detectors combined at the bottom? Nope, you have to do it like I showed you. If you want them on there, you'd have to add them. What if a number four trade goes against you and you want to enter a TX the other way? Can you? Or is it going to flatten your position? Well, I mean, if you're in the number four still, it would flatten your position. If you wanted to get out of the number four, then just hit close before the TX forms and then it'll take it. 
or manually put on the trade. So in case it does get triggered, you could have it ready to get in when the other one gets you out. Do we not use the filter button anymore? Really? No, no filter buttons are used at all on this template. Brett, I would say yes. Lori has very slow uh, speeds and she has a very good computer. Thank you, TZ. Are you able to put two TAs per row across the top of the chart? No, only one TA can go in a row. It's the way it's made. I don't, we don't own the program, we just program the TA into MP. This is how MP works. Should we leave the TX, ODD, DRD, ETX off always and sort of use it turning the old TX, sort of like turning the old TX filter off? Exactly. Show the NQ. I mean, this is NQ. Look the same. I would remove the existing templates from the original TAs. I'm not sure what you mean by that, Damien. Can you change the size of the symbol? No. Yeah, don't be trying to tune the engine while you're learning to drive the car. ODD stands for Oscillation Detector Divergence. DRD stands for Deviation Reversal Divergence. With this new filter, are all the filters automatically on? All the filters are automatically on. That can be on, as I stated in the training. But you do not use the filter button. Does this work well with micros and on the NQ? Yes. It's a great tool for you. Thank you so much for using this. This is the best webinar I think I've seen in six months. You're very welcome. So starting out, we can just have semi turned on, I'll always have just semi turned on. And quick, long or short, if we have a potential setup, just to begin with. Yeah, like you can just go down here to like say just the TX filters, right? Click it on there. And then don't forget when it triggers a trade, you gotta click it again, right? Cause it'll go off, you gotta turn it back on. You can just start just with that. This template is already set up with all the indicators. You can't have an opposing position. If you have an opposing position, it closes it out. If you are long and you go short, that's called closing. Okay, um, is the ODD TA, TXTA the equivalent of turning off the filter? In, yes. The top part that is blank, where you pin in your notes. So, Yeah, I guess you could do that. Like right up here. You could pin your notes. Like if you make a little notepad with your cheat sheet, you could pin it on top using the pin program we teach you to use. It's a good idea. Let's see, when is a good time to make a reversal trade? Whenever there is one. <laughs> Yeah, I love taking them off levels. That makes them even better. Can you move them around? No, do not move things around. Don't move it around. Just get used to it. So news, again, you just go to indicators, you go to news, and you change the panel. News. And then panel right there two three four five one whatever yes yeah, so there should be auto alerts on for all of the setups 
If you want to check your audio alerts for each setup, all you got to do is go in and go to indicators, go to institutional order prints, and then elevator, see how it has true audio, true audio, WTX, true, true. Our low volume score, true for pending, true for confirmed. Third bar swings, true, true. See, they're all built in. I noticed on the NQ chart, the TA is showing ES in the title of each setup. The NQ chart. The well, if that is the case, then it won't be doing that once it gets fixed. Oh, that's an accident. I probably loaded the wrong template, or he needs to fix the template name. So don't worry about that. We'll fix that. Let's see here. How do you get the TA? Go to apexinvesting.com forward slash automate. To get the trading assistant, go to apexinvesting.com forward slash automate. Um, yeah, we have a big discount right now. It usually costs 950 bucks for the automation. So right now you can get it for 497. What was the result like when you used these? Well, I, I do very well. <laughs> I just got funded for another $300,000 account. Thank you for your entire team. You're welcome. The triple dipper built in? Nope. We have about 20 trades, so we're not going to build all of them in. It'd be overwhelming. I think we're about at our max here. Let's see. We'll overwrite the existing indicators such as elevators, double TX, and setup four. I don't know what you mean by overwrite the indicators. Or the indicators are built in. Um, are the vids on all the setups of the TA? Yes. On, on the sniper page. What is the blue text by bar range indicator that says ATX wrong variable? Probably means you don't have a paid membership and so you're getting an error message. If you have a free membership, you'll get error messages because it won't be able to load things like elevators, third bar swings, things like that. What's the best setup, the one that works all the time? The one in your dreams, Ronald. The one in your dreams. Do we still let the chart run after six bars F5? Yeah, I still F5. I F5 about every hour when it slows down. Can we still see the visual notifications of the indicators? We already went through that. Or it's 597. I'm sorry. I said 497. It's 597. Um, would it be safe to adjust the label as to slide the TA to the right of the chart? Yes. If you want to put it, this is something you can do. If you want those on the right of the chart, you can go in here. And where it says label, yeah, add zeros. I could put a bunch of dots in. And it'll move it over. So if you want to go in and put a whole bunch of periods in there to move it over and line it up, you can. Just remember if you shrink your chart down smaller, 
I may not be able to see it. So, like that. But like if the chart was like over here, uh, so you can start covering stuff up. But you can't put a bunch of periods in there if you want to try to move everything to the right. Um, yeah, it's 597. Sorry about that. The TA is 597 instead of 950. Good gosh, come on. Let's see, are we going to be able to load this in Market Replay? Yes, you can load it in Market Replay. Yes, there are special instructions for Market Replay. Very important special instructions for Market Replay. They are on the Trading Assistance page and they are detailed. And you must follow them or it will not work. Um, thank you, Dean, for the webinar tonight. I'm going to listen on my photo of this again while I'm at work. Might be a good place to type in cheat sheet notes as well. So, yeah, go ahead and type up your cheat sheet notes. Uh, yeah, I mean, you could type, if you want to type in little notes right here for cheat sheet, turn on, on, when, turn off, when. If you want to type in cheat sheet notes like inside the names, you could do that. So, like, turn off when there's two to three bar chop. You could put that on, like, the setup for TA. When Marcus Plus does a software update, I upload the new update and I tell everybody. I'm going to wrap that up for the night. I hope you all got a lot out of this. Like I said, I'll get this up and then I'll get up the PowerPoint as well tomorrow. Okay. All right. Y'all have a fantastic evening and be looking for that ninja note.